so good to me on this journey. He has blessed me with friends and a family so dear, a humble place to reside and food on my table. of this earth cannot satisfy me I'm happy and free down inside of me I'm longing for firstborn son with the angel of death passing low it was hard to fall asleep for one little lamb stood in his mind as he laid there counting sheep he wondered why the young lamb had to die So he called out to his earthly father With a trembling voice so scared Crying, Father, will you please look and see If the blood is still there And he said, Son, now don't you worry For the blood is there to stay may blow, the rain may fall, but it won't just wash. 
wash away. Oh, the flood will stand the raging storm. It's been applied with loving care. Safe, secure, you can rest assured that the blood is still there. Looking over the damage that Satan storm had left behind, the flood of endless questions, doubt had filled my mind. The fear that gripped my troubling soul brought me back to my knees in prayer. I was crying, Father, will you please look and see if the blood is still there? And he said, Son, now don't you worry, for the blood is there to stay. Just wash away. Oh, the blood will stand the raging storm. It's been applied with loving care. Safe, secure, you can rest assured that the blood is still there. Safe, secure, you can rest assured that the blood.
morning meeting Hallelujah greeting A devil beating I was saved A heavenly shower Of holy power That's what we're needing Here today Testimony meeting Hallelujah greeting A devil beating I would say a heavenly shower of holy power. That's what we're needing here today. Well, when I was just a lad, I'd go to church with mom and dad. But that was the time that I remember well. The preacher would cut his sermon short, and then he would ask for a report of those who would like to have their Savior tell. Testimony meeting, hallelujah greeting, a devil beating, I was saved, a heavenly shower of holy power, that's what we're needing here today. Well, the saints would stand and shout, it seemed to run the devil out, when the glory, hallelujahs, filled the air. There wouldn't be a dry eye in the place uh, We'd sing amazing grace You could feel the holy power everywhere Testimony meeting Hallelujah greeting A devil beating I would say A heavenly shower Of holy power That's what we're needing Here today Testimony meeting Shower, a heavenly 
still something that needs to be done here this morning. All hearts clear. We ain't worried about the time. It's all right. We got all day. This is the Lord's day. This is the Sabbath day. All right. Go ahead, Monty. Appreciate the Holy Spirit this morning. My goodness, can't put a price tag on him at all. What a... What a privilege it is when he shows up, right? We're going to give you what God's give us. We've, we've uh, been studying on this this week and feel that it's very needed and feel it's for today. And uh, just, uh, just feel that within my heart. We're in Col- uh, Colossians. Colossians chapter 4, two verses there we're going to read this morning. Two verses. 12 and 13. Ephesus, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. That word complete there means filled. That's what that means. For I bear him record that he hath a great zeal. Remember that. That he hath a great zeal for you. And them that are in Laodicea and Hierapolis. Now, every firefighter that's in this building right now, I don't know how many's in here. I know Billy's one and there might be others. Not sure. Emma, I think does some when she ain't in the hospital, but some of them, some of you all fight fires and know all that kind of stuff. Well, every firefighter here will tell you what it takes to start a good fire. It takes a good wind, a flame, and something to burn. That's what it takes to to start a fire. I've read to you about a man named Ephesus this morning. We don't know much about him. That's only what's in Colossians here. But from what we can gather, he was saved under Paul's preaching. Ephesus was. And it seemed that he was responsible for leading many of the Colossians to the Lord. He also took the gospel to Laodicea and Hier- Rapus. All three of these cities were in the same river valley. And this one zealous man is accountable. You go back and you read in your, in your concordance and things. He was responsible in leading many 
of these people to Jesus Christ in these three different cities. Now, that's pretty big. One, it took one zealous man, but he was zealous, and he got out to do that. Think, think about Ephesus for just a minute. He was, a, he was zealous for the Lord, the Bible says. He was zealous for the Lord. The Greek word zeal means burning. Burning. Beach Fork's word for zeal would be fired up. That'd be my word this morning. Fired up. This man was fired up for the Lord and he was fired up in leading people to Jesus Christ. He was a man that was 100% sold out for the work of the Lord. That's what he was. Think about what would happen around here, Bob, if we could get a few men fired up for the Lord. Boy, listen how dead you are. You're pitiful. You're pitiful. Listen, listen to me. I'm being serious this morning. This is what God showed us. Think about what could happen here if we could get some men fired up for the Lord. It would be amazing what would happen around this place. Think about if we had some men that were truly fired up for the Lord. Think about what would happen in our homes, in our community, and in this church. If we had some men fired up for the Lord. Fired up. You know what fired up means? It means passion. It means passion. Now to me, I get passion about October, September, around in there when the Ohio State Buckeyes are 10-0 and, and, they're, and they're playing and they're thumping everybody. I get fired up about that. I get fired up when the Bengals go into the playoffs hot and they start beating teams and, and beating teams that the ESPN guys say they can't beat and are beating them anyway. Cool Joe hitting the passes down the field. That fires me up. Can't help it. It fires me up. It fires me up when us guys get together and play a little golf and, and I like to laugh at you and you like to laugh at me and we get fired up about that, right? I don't know what fires you up, man. Maybe it's hunting. Maybe it's fishing. Maybe it's that new bass uh, fishing pole they got out there, that new lure. You can't wait to get it in the water. Or maybe that new bow. You can't wait to get in a tree stand with it and look down that bow at that big buck coming at you. Or maybe it's that big coon dog that you're thinking about getting down there. I don't know what fires you up. But what I'd like to do is I'd like for you to take some of that passion. Hear me now. Take some of that passion that you got for some of those things and put it on Jesus Christ. Take some of that and bring it to church with you. Take some of that and put it in the seat with you. We all, we all say we feel passionate about these things. And we might even say, we might even say something like this. Well, I, I do feel passionate about Jesus, but religion's a private matter. Well, maybe religion's a private matter, but Christianity, my friend, is a public thing. That's Bible. Here's what, here's Jesus, Jesus didn't say, sit on the gospel and don't tell anybody you're a Christian unless you're asked. Here's what Jesus said, go make disciples. Here's what else he said. He said, you shall be my witness. He wants you to go spread this thing. What the world needs today is not more politics. We don't need more Democrats or Republicans. We don't need any more of that nonsense. We don't need any more welfare. We don't need any, any more uh, petitions going around. What we need more than anything are men to step up and get on fire for God where they need to be. Some of you don't believe me, you're awful quiet. But I'm telling you the truth this morning. That's what this country needs. Do you realize we're just about in war? We're just about to go to war. World War III is about to happen. Things are getting shot out of the air. Russia's breathing down our throat. China's breathing down our throat. The little short fella over there is breathing down our throat. They're wanting to go to war with us. We don't get some men on fire for God and back on our knees and get our family saved and back in the house of God. They may not have another opportunity. A button could be pushed while we was asleep at night and this world could be over with. That's how real this thing is. What will it take to get some men on fire for God like Ephesus? Earlier I told you what it would take. It takes three ingredients. It takes a good wind. It takes a flame and it takes something to burn. 
That's what it takes to get some men on fire for the Lord in our churches. It takes a good wind, it takes a flame, and it takes something to burn. I love services like we had here this morning. People minding the Lord. The Holy Spirit having His way. Folks coming to the altar. Getting rid of their convictions. Getting rid of, their, getting rid of the things they've been packing around. I love that. I love when the Holy Spirit falls on this place. I love when the Holy Ghost gets down my neck and starts crawling in my back. And I love that feeling. I love it. I love to see those young people on their feet, minding God and running around here, feeling the Holy Ghost. They'll never be the same. They'll never be the same once they taste of that and take that with them into the world. I love that here. I love the Holy Spirit here. And I want to keep it here, don't you? I want to keep it here. The first thing ingredient it takes to start a good fire is a big wind. How can a wind fire up men for the Lord? Well, the Greek word for spirit happens to be wind. The Greek word for spirit happens to be wind. What fires up men for the Lord is a holy wind. A holy wind. Let's translate that holy wind into the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 2 says this, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. I like when that wind comes down in these windows or however it shows up in here and begins to come in and out of these pews and pecking people on the shoulder that ain't moved in a while and gets in their bones and, and it makes them want to jump up and holler praise the Lord and they don't know why. It's that wind I'm talking about. That's that wind. We've got to have that to start a fire. We've got to have that to start a fire. What better way to fire up men for Jesus and the Holy Spirit? And the Holy Spirit happens to be available here. It happens to be available here. In fact, if we're a Christian, we have access to the Holy Spirit. Because He lives in here. The Holy Spirit lives in us. Think of the potential we have dwelling within us. Can you comprehend that? I've been trying to comprehend that, Tom, this week. Think of the potential that's living inside me. And what am I doing with it part of the time? Not much sometimes. Think of the potential. We have God in us, filling us with his presence. Think about the limitless possibilities we have. We have the Holy Spirit that lives inside us. That same Holy Spirit that filled Peter, James, and John lives in Doug, Tom, Tyson, Mike, Roger, and Dad, and Roger, lives in every one of us, Johnny. That same Holy Spirit that lived in these men live in us today. That same Spirit that lived in Ephesus that made him zealous is in us today. God has equipped us with that same Holy Spirit, and he has equipped us with the same Spirit his disciples had. That should excite us, but listen. It don't. Just telling you the truth. It don't. It should excite us, but it don't. We all place Peter, James, and John up on this high spiritual pedestal. Do you realize they put their britches on the same way we did? Same way we do? We have that same Holy Ghost living inside us. We're just scared to use it sometimes. We have access to the same power we did. God's not holding out on us, Roger. A matter of fact, if we're not fired up, we're holding out on him. It's just that simple. We're holding out on him. The first ingredient needed to start a big fire is already available. We have the wind. It's dwelling within us. I'm happy to say it shows up around here all the time when we have church. That Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is always welcomed inside this place. A matter of fact, if you go to Beach Fork Church or you know anybody that goes to Beach Fork Church or you're affiliated with this church in any way and you die lost and go to hell, that's 100% on you because we have the Holy Spirit in this place. The Bible says it takes the Holy Spirit to draw men to be saved. 
So we try to create the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to do his work in. We're doing our part. If you ignore it, push it off, walk out those doors, that's on you. That's going home with you. You can't point your finger at us. Do you know what it takes for the Holy Spirit to draw men? It, to draw men into this place, it takes the Holy Spirit to draw men to this place, right? Well, that being said, Beach Fork is a blessed place because I got news for the devil this morning or news for anybody that wants to hear. Edwin, I got news this morning, and it's this. Here it is. Beach Fork runs and operates on the Holy Spirit. I've been here 55 years. It always has. Your up-to-date pastor you have now, been here for 60 years. It always has, ain't it, Tom? And it'll always continue. How do I know that? I got a confidence in him 100% that it'll continue right down the same path, being operated and dwelt, and the Holy Spirit be brought here. The wind will stay here. The Holy Spirit is always welcomed in these services. We never, ever, ever want to take it for granted, and we never, ever want to do anything to quince it. We want to welcome it when it comes in the house. Amen? We want to welcome it. The second thing needed. I'm hurrying along. The second thing needed. The second thing needed to start a good fire is a flame. So where do we get a spiritual flame? Well, how about what Jeremiah 23, verse 29 says? Is not my word as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock into pieces? Jeremiah 20, verse 9 says, But his word was in my heart as a burning fire, John, shut up in my bones. The word of God happens to be the flame that's needed to put men in fire, on fire for God. We have the message that has been sent across the world that this world needs. We have the message. We have the gospel of Jesus Christ that can set people free. We have the word of God that will bring conviction and repentance upon a person. We have the eternal truth from an eternal God at our hand. We have the truth. And by the way, if you come to this church, you're not going to get sugar-coated truth. You're going to get the truth from the Word of God. That's all we know to bring. That's all we know to bring. And we try to keep bringing it week after week. Try to keep bringing it week after week. The Word of God. Straight from the Word of God. Straight from the Word of God. You know what? If you go here to Beach Fork, you don't have to wonder what the truth is. If you go here to Beach Fork, you don't have to wander around your whole life, climb some high mountain, talk to some wise man, and ask him what the truth is. Because you're given the truth every week. Week after week, you're given the truth from the Word of God. It's the flame. It's the flame needed to set men on fire. That ought to excite us. But it don't. It don't. The whole world is looking for what we already have. Do you know that? They're looking for what we already have. We have been blessed to know the mind of Almighty God. We have, he has entrusted us with his message to go spread the word of salvation. Of all the people in the world, and all the people available in the world, he chose us to proclaim his gospel. That's pretty privileged. The second ingredient needed to start a big fire is the flame. It's the word of God. We have that. Told you we have the Holy Spirit. We have the word of God. So what's the, what's the third ingredient? It's the one that's lacking. It's the one that's lacking. It's the one that that's why there's churches closing their doors. It's the ones that they have church splits because they're not having any growth. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with men. I'm going to preach to you men this morning, okay? Here's the problem with our stubborn, willless ways, okay? You women ought to be shouting right now. Here it is. Here's the problem. 
Here's the problem. We're living way too lukewarm. We're living way too way afar from the voice of the Lord because we can't get a hold of that third ingredient. That third ingredient is something to burn. The first two ingredients has been provided by God for us to have. But that third ingredient needed has to be provided by you, the fuel. You are the fuel that starts the fire. It's you. We have the Holy Spirit, we got the Word of God, but we need the fuel. You are the fuel. All that's needed to have men on fire for God is you. That's all that's needed. We need men. Hear me. We need men, Everett, who are full of the Holy Ghost. We need men. We need men who have the flame, the Word of God, burning with inside their bones like Jeremiah talked about. We need men who are not afraid to stand for Jesus Christ when things get a little gray around us. We need men who are not ashamed to live their lives for the glory of God in front of their wives. We need men who see a world lost and dying and going to hell around them and they step up and do something about it. We need men who are sold out, committed, living clean lives, holy before the Lord so God can use them and call them in to do his service. We need men who are passionate for the Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. All that's needed right here at Beach Fork is the fuel. That's all we need. We got the other stuff. We, we just need the fuel. I'm gonna tell you something. Listen to me, man, you men, and you women as well. Go ahead and listen to me. You can't bring the fuel coming two times a month. The God I serve requires your faithfulness in all ways. Everything, everything. You can't bring the fuel straight on the fence. You can't bring the fuel when you're mean at home and grouchy at home. You can't bring the fuel that way. You got to come clean and ready to go to his go to his house. You got to be you got to be ready. You know what will happen if just one steps up to get the fire today to start the fire? You know what'll happen? It'll burn into their hearts so strong that they'll sanctify themselves before the Lord and they'll come up brand new creatures in Christ Jesus. That's what'll happen when a man's serious about his ways serving the Lord. You talk about a fire, my friend, that'll spread and burn around here for years and years and years if we would only bring the fuel. If we would only bring the fuel. Do you know why we have the church we have? Do you know why? It's because of my dad's generation. Ralph Brown, James Ray, Carl Brown, Carl Atkins. On and on the list could go. They brought the fuel. They brought the fuel. That's why I got to be raised and grown up and watch this place on fire. Live amongst the fire. This church has been talked about all over the country of how we act crazy out here. We got people that walk the seats, people that run outside and shout and go back and we got people that do that. We've been talked about. It don't matter, people, we brought the fuel. And I'm gonna tell you something. That fuel, Ralph Brown may not be sitting here right now. He's in glory with Rosalie. But do you know that his fuel is still burning right here today that he brought? Right here in your pastor. He raised a good young man, Tommy. Set him up for this job. Because of Ralph and Rosalie bringing the fuel, we got a pastor that's bringing the fuel, showing his kids what they need to do to bring the fuel. I'm telling you, you know why we've got probably one of the most fired up Sunday school superintendents in the land? It's called Scott and Rhonda for over 30 years has brought the fuel. Being honest with you, I'm telling you, take something. It costs something to bring the fuel. There's sacrifices. You gotta tell people no. Hey, I've got church tonight. I gotta be faithful. I gotta go do this. I gotta do that. No, I'm going to church. I'm going to the house of God. I'm putting him first. 
The reason why men is not on fire for God because God's come off the top of their bucket list and went clear down to the bottom of their list. That's why there's no men on fire for God today. It costs something. It costs something. I'm going to tell you something else. Beach Fork. Beach Fork has been a blessed place. You can call out people amongst, amongst our cousins. And we can get up here. And I'm not bragging on us. I'm not bragging on us. I'm just telling you the truth. Because you all know you all go here. We can call some people out of their seat to come up here and sing that maybe we ain't sang together, but somehow we can find a part of harmony and sing harmony. Do you know why that is? It's because Carl and Burnus brought the fuel. They taught those girls how to sing like canaries. It's brought down on all of us because of that. When you walk in this parking lot and you get out of your car and you walk to the front doors of this building, there's two twins that look alike. They stand back there at the back door and they always got some good wisdom to say to you and they always tell you something good. They open the doors for you with a smile on their face. It's because they had a mommy for over many, many years, Cora Jones, that had an artificial leg. She brought the fuel. Every service, she brought the fuel. She would get up and skip around this place and put healthy people to shame. When the Holy Ghost got on her, she was bringing the fuel. Now today, because she brought the fuel, the doors of our church swing open by her two sons that let everybody come in. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and sit down in the presence of God. Glory be to God. Praise his name, praise his name. Woo, woo. Hallelujah. Hear me, I'm not done. I got some good stuff to get to. I'm almost done, but but I got I got I gotta say this. Ted, if you and Carla would have stayed in Peebles and never come down here to this place, you wouldn't have a bass singer up here, a drum player, a young man that just absolutely loves the Lord with all of his heart. Because you brought the fuel, God's blessed you. Telling you, telling you. Mary, do you know why you don't have to worry about your in-laws? Huh? Because you and Mike's brought the fuel. God put the right people in their lives, exactly what they needed. Done it for you too, Mike. I mean, think about, because we've not sacrificed anything, we have brought the fuel, and what happens when we bring the fuel? The blessings from heaven fall down upon us. I'm going to tell you something. We need to keep this church the way it is. We need to keep it run the way it is, operating on the Holy Spirit from now on. Because I got grandbabies in this place. They need to know what it's like when they get a bad doctor's report, that they can come to an altar of prayer and be touched by the oil and believe in the healing of God because we're bringing the fuel, God will show up with the healing because we're putting him first. He ain't down here at the bottom of our list. He's at the top of our list. He'll show up for us. It's worth bringing the fuel for our babies. It's worth bringing the fuel for our babies. Amen. Beach Fork, what we need this morning more than anything, and I'm almost done, what we need this morning more than anything, is we need an old-fashioned prairie fire. Listen to this. The 19th century settlers spoke of the violence, the noise, the heat, and the power of a great prairie fire. They said that the prairie fire, when it would catch on fire, was like a great big thunderstorm where you experienced the raw power nature and force that it had. 
after the flames grabbed the fuel of the dry grass of the prairie, they said there's nothing left. But in weeks later, in weeks later, it comes back so pure. Every green leaf is perfect. Every flower petal has the, its biggest colors and perfect design. It shines brighter than it's ever shined before after the fire goes through. Every flower is perfect. And it reminds you, the settler said, it reminds you of being young again. In the same way, God's consuming fire brings new life when we're willing to let him burn the dry fields of our heart. When we let him burn the dry fields of our heart. Now some here this morning, this is what God showed us this week. And, and here's what he showed us. There's people that's been living in dry prairie fields. Men, you've been living in dry prairie fields. God wants to burn them, that dead grass out of your heart this morning. He wants to burn that out of there. You've been walking around in these dry prairie fields and it's profiting you nothing. Absolutely nothing. Your family ain't closer than it's ever been. No, it's farther apart than it's ever been. Guarantee you. Your life is kind of rough right now because you're, just, you're right there on the fence. You're wanting to, but man, I can't let loose of this, or I can't do that, or I can't, I can't, just all these, Caleb preached a message on the ends last week. We kind of throw that at God. You're not profitable living that way. If you'll only let God burn the dry, dead grass in your heart this morning, and catch you on fire, but it's got to take you bringing the fuel. He ain't going to come back to your seat and douse you with it. You got to bring it to him to start the fire. And, and here's what the Lord showed us. Now, you may think I'm crazy, but I don't really care. I feel really good right now. So I don't really care what you're thinking. Me and Tom both preached a message, and that's what this shovel and this rake's for. It's a couple messages we preached. You guys all signed this shovel. I won't read your name and shame you. But you all signed this shovel. Tom preached a message about cleaning out your well. Remember the message? Wonderful message. Wonderful message. Bob DeMint owns a hardware store over there. and He always fixes us up when we do something off the wall with some message. He'll bring something what we need. Some of you might need to grab this shovel this morning. Oh, Doug, I can't do that in front of everybody. What will Amy think of me? Amy, you won't think nothing, will you? <laughs> See there? I preached a message on walking on the mantles. That's probably why Tyson's a little bit crazy. Because he raked where his papa sat. He raked and he dug up his papa's mantle and he asked, oh, he's James Ray reincarnated. <laughs> Ain't he, Rhonda? He is. A lot of you raked in that service. Won't call you out by name, wouldn't embarrass you. But boy, you're a long way from where you was when you raked. Some of you are. I don't know what you need to do this morning. I don't know how you need to bring the fuel. I don't know. I don't know how you, how you need to bring the fuel, but you need to bring the fuel. Scott gets a song, Tommy goes to the piano, Jeff or whoever goes to the piano and plays. That's mine to the Lord this morning. Hey, we're all family. We all love each other. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. There ain't nobody being judged right now. If the Holy Ghost has spoke to you this morning, if he's asked you to step out of your seat, won't you do it today? Won't you do it today? Bring the fuel. Bring the fuel and let Jesus Christ, let him do something wonderful for you today. Amen. As we stand all over the building, stand all over the place this morning, have your way, God, have your way. Sing, Scott, sing. Have your way, Lord, we pray today. Yes, Jesus, have your way, Lord. Oh, God, have your way.
Yes, Jesus. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream. God's speaking to you. He's speaking to you. He wants to do a great work for you today. He wants to do something great for you. Amen. you got to be willing to bring the fuel. Yes, Jesus, have Sheds its beams around. He's given me this week and appreciate him being here this morning. Amen. Appreciate the victories that's happened around the altar. Appreciate you coming. Nice looking crowd today. Appreciate you coming. For all of us, us men especially. And uh, I, I appreciate the word this morning. I feel like revival's 
already in the air. Revival fires are burning. Invite somebody out to a service tonight. Wonderful crowd this morning when you all got here. My goodness, we got a great crowd. And I just appreciate you being here this morning. Come back tonight, Brother Caleb's preaching. Ellie Thompson, I believe, from uh, Young Girl from Valley, I think, going to be singing. I can't understand that. Oh, okay. So we got Luke and Chelsea and other singers singing too. But anyway, just come back tonight. Uh, Brother Caleb's preaching tonight in the service, so look for great things to happen in the Lord. Invite If you know somebody that needs help, bring them, because this is a place to come and get it. God bless you.